we uh, did go a little bit long here this morning. Um, of course, I um, involve, am involved with the teaching time, so when I go overtime, I'm only stealing time for myself a little later on, so I can do this, right? Um, but in any case, here at the Independence Reform Bible Church, we do allow for questions following the uh, sermon. Um, and anybody that wants to just make comments about their, their weekend there at the uh, carnival, there in Morgantown, that wants anything to share about that, some conversations they were into, do feel free to, to mention that. Um, who has a question or a comment this morning? Yeah, Dave. In hearing your sermon, you didn't really get into the literal versus figurative. I, I, I references, but I mostly stayed away from it, no doubt. Yes. What are your, your, yeah. your you think it's figurative? Yeah, here, here's the thing. Um, I, I do because of the Old Testament language, but I, I, I now believe it's not limited to that. And there's a person in, in this room that can attest to the fact that I did at one time believe it was purely figurative. Right, Ryan? Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't that the uh, case I made again and again? That this is figurative, especially Acts 2. Um, on further study, I believe that there were things that happened literally, literally happened, that supported what we, what we saw here. I, I, I now do believe that. Uh, I, it's a book of Revelation I'm allowed to grow my understanding. Difficult book. Uh, yes, you have a follow-up question. I do have a follow-up question. All the other references that you posted from Isaiah, Ezekiel, and so on, yeah. those you would say they were figurative? As far as I know, they were. As, as, as far as I know. I don't have any other contemporary, um, like, like, like we do from Josephus. The interesting thing about Josephus is, I, I don't know, and some of you other men here might be able to uh, talk to this, but in terms of a historian, uh, at least for that time, I I don't know of anyone who was just questioned so little in terms of what he said happened than, than Josephus. I, I don't know if you would agree with that or not. Yeah, and that's a question more than any other historian by the church itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, 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 those are the big questions. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is interesting when you look at the number of historical texts that have been preserved. Uh, while I don't believe Josephus is inspired scripture, I do also believe that God has kept a very clear testimony that we might know and have a really clear understanding of what happened. So, yeah, I think he was considered very much an authority. Yeah, and I even read other, other writers, especially in this geography. That's it's very interesting. Josephus does a lot with geography. And I've seen other writers that said, you know what, his geography is just dead on. He knew what he was talking about. Because that's something, you know, history you can't go back and verify, right? I mean, who was there? Geography you can, to, to, to some degree. Other questions? There's, there's, to your, to your question, there is no question in my mind that there were absolutely signs in heaven, in heaven, during that time. No question about that. And there were convulsions in the earth, some of which are referenced in the scriptures, actually. Some of which are in the Bible itself. Other questions? Any comments about your, from anyone about their time in uh, at Morgantown? It was a, it was an enlightening time for anyone who was there. Um, it's good to get out and from the four walls and. Um, See what's happening out there? Yes, Jen. Although we didn't get a chance to really engage a lot of people because it was so loud with the music and with everything, nobody was overtly hostile towards us when we were there. People were coming in and they were, they were looking at what we had. I think they would have been interested if we could have engaged a little bit more, but it seemed like a, a good Yeah, good, a good experience for the most part. I was hoping to get some hostile atheists, but there, there's, if they were there, they didn't, I, we weren't able to engage to talk. Uh, yes, John. I would say in what, what Jen said, that we didn't see any overt hostility. As a matter of fact, what we saw was more embarrassment that they didn't know, which is actually a good sign. 
if you, if you have to, if you're looking for yeah. something redeeming uh, value of the, of the general populace that walk through, uh, it, the other thing for me is that it really pointed out what, how much work we have in this in our culture. We live, many of us live in a Christian bubble. We associate mostly with Christians, you know, because they understand what we're talking about. But they're, they're, we need to tell people so that they do understand the, the peril that, they, that they're that they in. Yeah. The peril that the soul of Revelation chapter 6. Yes, um, then, yeah, yes, we that, I think that answers my question. I was just wondering about... And then maybe it's because it's Morgantown. It's a more conservative area. It's not like a city where there's going to be a lot of... I well, bad people are. Well, I, it's just more... That's, that's how I look at it. So, there's yeah. More, to be honest, there's more rednecks here. And they're, they're more conservative in their thinking for whatever reason. Yeah. So um, I was wondering just about... Wondering why people weren't as hostile. I was going to ask that, you know, why people were interested, or if they're looking for, maybe they are looking for an answer, you know, or someone who's real about Christianity. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, um, as far as rednecks are concerned, I, I have aspired for years to become a redneck. Um, I have not yet made it. There is no transmission in our bathtub, um, uh, and. And I, you know, I am so unhandy that when it's time to change a light bulb, I have to crank up the YouTube videos to figure out how to do it. Um, no redneck is that clueless when it comes to, in any case, uh, I, I am a redneck fan myself. I'm not yet, have attained that status yet. Uh, yes? Well, we're rednecks from Washington State. <laughs> <laughs> At least that, that's what my, my parents would try to be rednecks. They were city people that moved to the country, so I, I was raised in East Eastern Washington? Or? No, uh, Southwest Washington. Southwest, okay. So all my friends were real rednecks, like a couple of generations <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my shame was that my parents were beginning that process. So we, we had a little toy farm, but my, my friends would talk from experience, and I was experiencing it as a new... The new person, so I feel your your pain. <laughs> First generation redneck. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we uh, we came late to the carnival on Friday night, Saturday night, Friday night. Yeah, it must have been Friday. Anyway, um, so we weren't here there for very long, uh, but we steered clear of your booth or any of the booths because of the music, because the the carnival the rides had enough white noise to drown it out a little bit, and maybe the speakers aren't pointed that way. So we found, uh, Elijah, my eldest, found your Paul Washer tract on the ground as we walked out. And so that's why we're here, but we're actually living like within sight, 1.2 okay. miles from here. So we're very thankful that uh, that you guys were there just so that the Christians could find you. Uh, we're very similar, uh, identical as far as I know, theologically, uh, but we haven't found anyone like you guys in the couple weeks we've been here. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, this is this is a neat place. Well, thank you. Uh, ben reached out to me yesterday because he found the um, the card and then the um, email address. And um, Ben was an answer to a thought I was having. Uh, has anybody else noticed the amount of um, of I don't even know what you call them towers with the <laughs> I'm I'm no redneck. I would know the answer. I, I would know this. Like uh, towers with the wires. Has anybody noticed how much more of them are, are going up around here? Um, what do you even call them? <laughs> Towers with power lines. Thank you. Yeah. They're transmission towers. Transmission yeah. towers. Yeah. As opposed to the distribution poles. In town. Yeah. Anybody else notice how much of them are going up around here? Uh, I, I something I've noticed, and um, Ben is in the area helping to put those things up, right, and stretch the wire and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's. You have questions about how that works. I can still talk about concrete. Uh, ben can talk about something a little more significant, how we get our electricity. Thank you, Ben. Um, other questions or other concerns from, from the morning? I want to thank you this morning for your kind attention. <laughs>